final game of the season means the final coaching spotlight of the year. And we actually had so many good candidates to choose from. Obviously, Andy Reid winning his third Super Bowl in Kansas City. I'm going to give a shout out to Steve Wilkes, San Francisco defensive coordinator. Wonderful game plan that he put together. But there's only one place for me to go here. And it's a guy that I think is slowly making a case as one of the best assistants in NFL history. We're going to spotlight Steve Spagnolo. Today's coaching spotlight is brought to you by Verizon. It's the official private wireless network of the NFL's coach to coach communication. And how about Steve Spagnolo's communication with his guys? I don't know. That was a lame attempt at a pun, I guess, but I'm so impressed by the job that the Kansas city chiefs defense has done. We know they've been good all year, but it's only now starting to hit me just what a run we've seen from the chiefs here over the last month. Do you realize the chiefs, the totality of their playoff performance, their four postseason opponent opponents were the number one through four teams in offensive DVOA this year. They played the number two overall Miami Dolphins, one of the most high-flying offenses in the NFL. Number three, Buffalo Bills, led by Josh Allen and all of his touchdowns. Number four, the Baltimore Ravens with the MVP, Lamar Jackson. And the coup de grace was the number one offense in the NFL, the San Francisco 49ers. Spags and his boys held those four teams to 15.8 points per game. Just about two touchdowns per game. That's what you're allowing to some of the most intimidating offenses in the NFL. And like I said, no challenge steeper than the San Francisco 49ers. And the Chiefs, by 49ers standards, shut them down. Their sixth lowest point total of the season, 22 points. Their seventh lowest yardage output held them to less than 400 yards in a game that went to overtime. So it's an entire extra overtime scoring possession. They still don't get to 400 yards. An amazing performance. We talked about this with Ben already, but I just hope the contributions of this defense don't get lost in the shuffle of Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid's greatness. And all of that's still true. Those guys are great. But think about the plays this defense made to keep the Chiefs in the game. George Karloftis recovers a fumble on the first possession of the game to keep the Niners from taking an early lead. Trent McDuffie breaks up a Debo Samuel touchdown in the end zone to start the second quarter. Trent McDuffie made about six plays in this game. It's a shame he drew the defensive holding flag, which I thought was kind of ticky-tack in overtime, because I think they would never give it to him because that's just not how this stuff works. I think Trent McDuffie had a case for a Super Bowl MVP, three pass breakups, broke up a touchdown, forced the incompletion on third and five at the end of regulation. If the Niners pick that up, remember, Andy Reid very strangely used an early timeout in the second half. If the Niners pick that up, they could potentially run the clock all the way down and win this game in regulation with a field goal. Trent McDuffie was phenomenal. Really, the entire Chiefs secondary was phenomenal, not letting a single 49ers pass catcher truly take over this game. Brandon Ayuk had some moments. Debo Samuel had some moments, but they were not able to dominate, particularly over the middle of the field, the way that we've gotten so used to seeing the Niners do. Christian McCaffrey, it looked like in the first on the first possession of this game, it looked like McCaffrey was going to do whatever he wanted all day long. And yeah, he ran for 80 yards, but at the end of the day, he averaged 3.6 yards per carry. You're going to take that every single time. The Niners running for just 110 yards as a team. That was the big deficiency of this Chiefs defense was stopping the run. Didn't look like a problem for them on Sunday night. And how could I forget Chris Jones? I'm going to bring him up as often as I need to as well because he once again did not log a Super Bowl sack. He's never gotten all the way home in a Super Bowl but you're not paying attention if you're not seeing the impact that this guy has. Multiple quarterback hits in this game, led the team with six pressures. By my count, between the third down and overtime that forced an incompletion and another one where Brandon Ayuk came open over the middle of the field, Chris Jones' pressures saved at least two, if not three, potential touchdowns in this game. That's the difference between San Francisco finishing with 22 points instead of potentially I don't know, 31 and winning this game because the Chiefs offense took too long to get into gear. He finished with no sacks in this game, four tackles, two quarterback hits. And yet I'm telling you, when he hits free agency here in about a month, 
he is going to be worth every penny of the insane contract that he gets, whether it's with the Chiefs, whether it's with another team, I'm not sure. But outside of Aaron Donald, there might not be a more impactful single defender in the NFL. Came up big. Spagnolo's guys came up big. They just hung in there. That stretch in the third quarter where they just turned the Niners away. And yeah, maybe Kyle Shanahan should have been a little bit more committed to the run there. But three straight three and outs in the third quarter to keep this thing close. And then Mahomes and Kelsey get it going, and it's a whole different ball game. But the defense needed to do its part first. 22 points, and that's with overtime as well. So less than 20 points in regulation. Shut down Lamar and the Ravens. Maybe didn't shut down Josh Allen and the Bills, but held them down enough to get the win. Shut down the Miami Dolphins. It's an incredible run. It's Spagnuolo's fourth Super Bowl championship. He's won three now with the Chiefs. He's been there for this entire dynasty. And the other Super Bowl might have been his masterpiece, holding the the 17 and 0, the 18 and 0, whatever they were, the undefeated New England Patriots to just 14 points back in 2007 to help the Giants get that championship. Think about those accomplishments. Think about the moments in NFL history that Steve Spagnuolo has been a part of. One of the the greatest, most surprising and impressive upsets in league history, and now his defense is a foundational piece of our most recent dynasty. The guy's a beast is what I'm trying to say. In Spags, we trust. I'm curious to see if he gets a second act as a head coach. It's not going to be for lack of a spotlight. He's deserving of every bit of it. He is a big part of why the Kansas City Chiefs are back-to-back champions.